welcome welcome everybody we're just waiting for more people to join in um, and we can start i'm very very excited for today's conversation we are starting this new series called conversations and it's in partnership with worthy worthy is a global advocacy brand sponsored and supported by the bill and melinda gates foundation and bella Nina style is the leading tech-driven fashion media platform in Africa. So we're so happy to leverage both our strengths for this conversation. We can wait for more people to join in so that we can start. But right off the bat, I would have invited our co-hosts, Mimi Onalaja and Moet Abebe, come on stage. I know Moet is now co-host. Mimi, essentially requesting me. I hope you can see it. Um, yeah, so we can start. We can go ahead now. I will leave the floor open for our guests to introduce themselves, but I'll start first. Hello, everybody. My name is Mary Eduro, and I am currently the head of content for Bella Ninja Style. I'm very, very happy to be here today to have this conversation because as someone who is in media, although digital media, I I do feel like these conversations are very important for females and also the general public to chime into. So please, if you're listening, feel free to chime into the conversation at any point. We'd love to hear your perspective. So I'll leave the floor for Moet. You can give us just a brief introduction of yourself and then we can go to Mimi. Mimi, I know you're in transit, so anything you give us, we're grateful. Hi, guys. Um, hi, my name is Moet Bebe. Um, I'm an on-air personality, TV presenter, and um, I've been pretty much doing this for about 10 years now. Um, I'm really excited to actually, you know, um, have the opportunity to actually, you know, kickstart this um, or these conversations. Um, and yeah, I'm really just looking forward, most importantly, to, you know, the questions and um, what I can also equally learn from everyone that joins the conversation today. Thanks so much, Moet. I know you don't need any introduction because we all already know the voice from radio, from TV. But thanks so much for the introduction, Mimi. Hi, Mimi. Oh. Hi, Mimi. Can you hear us? Uh oh. Okay, no problem. We can go on ahead. Um. So, um, hi, can Mimi. You can you hear, can you hear us me now? now? Yes. 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 Hello, hello, Mary. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, I lost you guys for a bit. I wasn't sure if my internet oh. was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. So we're just doing a round of introductions, really, and basically okay. what we're looking forward to um, in terms of this conversation for today. Okay, great. Um, my name is Mimi Onolacha. I'm a TV presenter, a, a compare, and an actor. Um, I've been doing this for about seven years now, I think. Yeah, seven years. Um, yeah, I was very excited to receive this invitation. I, I love what the um, topic of focus is today. And yeah, I think that it's very important that we continue as much as possible to have these conversations. I'm very excited to share, but I'm even more excited to learn. So yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mimi. We're also happy to host you. So right off the bat, truly, I think the majority of this conversation is going to focus on gender equality and sort of female empowerment, which I feel like Mimi and Moet do a lot of on their platforms in terms of the, what they wear, in terms of the unapologetic way they carry themselves. Being in media means you're always front-facing. You're always in front of the TV. You're always the one they are interviewing on the red carpet. So it must come with some sort of pressure. Now, the first question, really, there's so many beauty standards and ideologies on how people should look today, you know, with social media, with Instagram, with Photoshop, with everything. There's just so much. And for that celebrity influencer status, there is, I feel like, I don't know, I, I'm not an influencer or a celebrity, but I feel like it must come with some sort of pressure and, you know, some sort of standard that people feel like they have to meet up to. Do you have any personal stories? And both of you, I know you have such long, lengthy career journeys. So do you have any personal stories that you can share about your struggles or successes along your journey of self-understanding and self-love as a woman in media? 
Um, okay, so uh, if I was to share one, definitely it would be um, issues to do with, you know, weight gain or like, you know, like body image. Um, throughout my career, I, my weight has fluctuated, you know, um, and then all of a sudden, um, it, it became it became sort sort of popular um, for people on TV to quote unquote get their bodies done. And then it was just so funny how I then now started to fall into the category of, oh, has Moe got her body done too, you know? So it's it's quite interesting how the pressure has been to stay in a certain, or stay on a certain level or to suit a, st- a certain standard of beauty. And somehow, as God will have it, as, as, as time has gone by, it's quite interesting how now the accepted standard of beauty, quote unquote, or one of them happens to be you know, a lady who's curvy and that's what I've always been. But, you know, it's quite (laughs) interesting how now it's, oh, okay, she's curvy. So yes, Mm -hmm. she, 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 she will look good on TV, but there was a time when it was like, oh, Mo, you're too big to be on TV. Mm. So, you know, and that, that has been a major struggle I feel for me. And it was part of my self love journey to just accept that I'm not going to be one of those stick thin people on TV. I'm not like if I'm going to always be the lady that has the curves or, or yeah. whatever. So it, it, it was more of like, you know, accepting myself as soon as I came to that realization. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's very important. I, I love the angle of self acceptance. I think that's powerful. Mimi, I, I would let you start, but I, I do know that a few years ago you had this, a campaign where you sort of you was some, something like my body my myself something like that where you were preaching well, this is my body this is how I am and you know yeah. I accept myself like it like that and I remember sharing that with a friend of mine um, back then and she actually did follow you because like solely because <laughs> of that campaign she didn't know you before and then she solely followed you because of that so can you please take us through that story and what 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 really happened there yeah um yeah so that campaign was called magnificent in my image and Mm -hmm. at the time i just felt that it was important to me to share some of my personal experiences um on my journey towards um total confidence and self-acceptance and to just kind of remind people that you as you are is 100 percent enough Mm -hmm. um so i i think i i don't know that i i have any uh, extremely profound moments um, to share or like a big turning point or whatever, you know, it's kind of been taking little steps and little steps t- to get to this point where I feel like, you know, I have a good handle on accepting myself as is, you know, um, but I will share this and I shared this back then. Um, it's a little throwback, but it's just, I remember the moment when, I realized that my body was not quote and unquote perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was back in secondary school. I was in SS2 and we had these class awards that we would do where we would um, nominate each other and then vote and pick a winner across various categories. And one of those categories was um, something called DKNY, which was an mm-hmm. acronym for double kegs. No, I don't know if I can say it. Uh, I mean, double kegs, <laughs> double kegs, no yash, basically. What? <laughs> and wow. I, wow. I, can never, <laughs> I can never forget this day. Um, we were all in class, you know, nominees were being read out, and all of a sudden, I, my name was called, and I was like, huh? What? Before then, you know, before then, I honestly thought that I had the perfect body, you know, I was fine in, in my body. But mm. here I was in a class of, what, 102 students, I think, and they all thought that I was a worthy nominee for that category. And it kind of opened my eyes to, for the first time in my life, to um, an imperfection, quote and unquote. And that, mom- that moment started me on a journey towards, um, or rather that moment was the beginning of me dealing with one of my biggest insecurities for for a while. Um, and I think I'm just sharing this to highlight that it's so important sometimes to only look at ourselves through our own lenses mm. um, 
for the longest time, I only saw myself through my own eyes and I was everything. And then all of a sudden, I, I started to see myself through other people's eyes and, you know, I all of a sudden wasn't enough. Um, another thing that I would share is, um, and something that has really helped me with self-acceptance would be social media, funny enough. Mm. Now I know that. Yeah, because there's honestly two sides of that stick. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's we, we scroll through every day and it's so easy to, to um, take in images of people that are seemingly perfect, you know. Yeah. Um, it's easy to see all of the things that you lack in yourself when you look at these perfect images and perfect bodies, perfect skin or whatever the case may be. But at the same time, you know, you put up some pictures sometimes and you have pe- your, your people in your little corner that are hyping you all the way up, you know, mm-hmm. to those yeah. people, yeah, okay. you, are, you, are, you are the biggest thing since sliced bread and you are beautiful and you are perfect. And I mean, in terms of numbers, they might not amount to, or in your eyes, they might not be as significant as some other people that you are um, observing. But the truth of the matter is that one person, those two people, those three people that are hyping you up, putting all the beautiful emojis, telling you that you look amazing, you can choose to focus on that, you know. Mm. Um, so the way I see it, I always choose to focus on the positive. And I know that it's, 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 it's not the easiest thing because um, I don't know if Moe uh, can relate, but you might have, for example, 20 comments 19 mm-hmm. of them might be amazing, but there's just yep, this that one. one. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. there's just this one yeah. that you can't seem to shake. Yeah. So I mm. honestly, I honestly have to get get myself to a point where I focus on the positive, you know, and I hold on to that. Um, mm. If 19 people think that I'm, I, I look amazing and I'm perfect the way I am, why focus on the one person? Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? So, that one. I, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, I know that it's very difficult on social, on the streets of social media, but it's mm-hmm. honestly mind over matter. And it's, it's, it's how, it's one of the ways that I have, you know, tried to really build on my self confidence here yeah, and mm-hmm. self acceptance. Mm-hmm. Wow, I, I think mm. both of you share some really key points that are sort of similar, but have their own like very powerful interpretations. When we spoke about self acceptance, I think that's great. And you, Mimi, said something about viewing yourself through your own lens, which I think is, is like people don't think about it because you're always looking at other people like, oh, this person has this, this person looks this way. Well, how about you just try yourself and like, okay, I'm perfect. I look good. You know, I'm the Beyonce of this group. Period. And that's mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. But, but it's yeah. so interesting you raise social media because the second question, pretty much, I thought social media would come up. So I wanted to ask, what are some of the most significant barriers to female empowerment and self-acceptance in TV and film? I mean, I, I hmm. thought social media would really be one of the the top the top points because I I know sometimes it can be an issue um, when you are trying to break into the media industry. You might feel like you need to look a certain way, and I mean yeah. we all see everybody looking gorgeous. We see the airbrush filter, the pictures and videos. We see everything looking so glamorous. When you're trying to break in, you feel like oh I must fit into this certain box. What do you think yeah. some of these barriers are? I mean, you can go first or more. Okay. Um, funny enough, I don't know that. I, I honestly, I, I don't know if this is me being overly positive. <laughs> um, it's but it's it's generally the disposition that I try to adopt. Um, for just most of my life, you know. Um, I don't know that I would see social media as a barrier. To be honest, if anything, I would see it as a very powerful tool. Um, we live. Yes, I agree. Partic- yeah, particularly in the age that we live in today. It's so, for the first time in a while, um, being 100% authentic is absolutely celebrated. Being 100% who you are is is what I think um, more and more of the world is interested in seeing today. Mm-hmm. And what what better way to portray that than through mm-hmm. social media, where mm-hmm. you can choose to be completely unfiltered, you can choose to be 
completely yourself, you know, and you can choose what way that you want to share that with the world. So I would honestly say that um, as a woman trying to break into the industry, TV, film, whatever the case may be, I think, first of all, train your mind to see social media as a very powerful tool rather than a barrier, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, I, it's, I know that we're in the age of content, you know, and consumption of content, content is, at, is at an all-time high. And there's so much of that. You need to, first of all, train yourself to view, such, to view all content with a filter. It's so important to be able to pick and choose what um, has what will um, what you will retain in your mind and in your memory, and you know just throw the rest away. Um, it's 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 a conscious effort. That's the truth, and it's 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 continually um, it's ongoing. You know, um, mm. it's you're constantly learning how. But I think it's so important to be able to filter when you consume content. And I think just think of social media as a powerful tool. One thing that I do um, is I make it a point of duty to make sure that I follow certain people. And I make it a point of duty to make sure that those people um, constantly show up on my timeline. Because they they just help to reinforce um, my confidence, you know, and there's, I mean, I'm a human being at the end of the day. It's easy to say mm-hmm. that I'm always positive and it's, you know, but there's downtimes. And sometimes you're having a downtime and inspiring content just pops up on your, on your timeline. And that is because I, you, I, I try to be deliberate about um, the people that I follow, you know. So, yeah, I feel like we're all helping ourselves on this journey. And I personally choose to see social media as a tool rather than a barrier. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Mimi. I, ha- I have to agree with what she said, um, you know, um, concerning social media being a major tool. It is a nowhere barrier. If we were to speak of any possible barrier, I would feel like yourself, you are your barrier. Mm, mm. Like, you're the one who's going to listen to the naysays or listen to the people who say that you're not good enough. You're the one who's going to, you know, accept if people tell you no. I've been told no a million times. I keep on being told no. I'm still being told no up to today. But I'm still on this journey of self-love and knowing that my day will come. And another thing about me, and I feel like that that has personally helped my journey, um, is that I believe that what's mine is mine. Mm. What, what, What will be mine? What will be my story? What will be my gig? What will be my journey what will be my gift what will be whatever what will be my legacy mm-hmm. is going to be mine so i don't need to necessarily over fight or yeah. over try to seek validation because like mimi said you are enough you know and and you you realizing that you're enough i feel is the first and major step of you know finding that self-love and as i said you are your only barrier so once you stop getting in the way of you, you'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- thank, thank you, Moe. I, I mean, this conversation is really, really interesting. And I want to invite everybody, let's, if you have something to chime into the conversation, to add, please send a request. We'll get you up here and then you can also share your thoughts on the topic. So um, next I'm going to go to it's a bit controversial and I know we've been like oh yeah believe in yourself self-acceptance self-confidence but I'll be honest sometimes the pressure it gets worse like the pressure gets deep sometimes especially on social media I mean for the past few years you know we've seen a rise in things like body contouring BBL lip injections and more surgical procedures that are I mean the biggest trend in beauty I know for both of you you have a very huge following on social media as well as younger females younger adults how can we teach them that you know i mean it's one thing to say yeah me myself i accept myself i love myself i'm confident but with your platforms i know you do you both do so much amazing work um in terms of like giving back to community but also for these young ladies how do we get to let them know that it's okay you know it's con- it, it's okay to be yourself if you want to do the surgery that's fine but the way you are is fine how do we preach these messages how do we how do we constantly like keep it top of mind for the people that 
follow you using your platform basically Hmm. Hmm, that's a tough one but i i feel i feel i feel the way like me personally the way that i literally let people know that it's okay to do your body but you don't necessarily need to is i use myself as an example you know um like oh like to be honest i would like to get some work done you know what i mean but it's not (laughs) necessarily at the top of my mind because i'm moving I'm, I'm like, like the, the, the greater goals in a sense. And I don't necessarily look at my body or how the world sees me as being the only tool that I can use to achieve my dreams or my goals or you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just feel that, yes, that like there's nothing wrong if you have the money, if you have the, or like you've done enough research and you've done all, the, all, the, all that is needed, mm-hmm. go ahead. But at the same time, as I said, the way I personally sort of push that is like no judgment, but you are enough. Mm -hmm. It's still just that it's still just that constant reminder that you are enough. And also, like if a lot of female celebrities also come out and open and say, oh, hey, I have um, I don't know, I have PCOS, so I have bad skin. But hey, this is how I sort of, you know, get over it. Or I have cellulite. This is how I don't really care and I wear a short skirt like I just feel like Mm. there's so many ways of of promoting Mm -hmm. this whole like body acceptance and self-love by just us ourselves Mm. actually that's the celebrities ourselves also like letting people know that yeah we're not perfect like yes like this picture was not photoshopped or Mm -hmm. hey this is a picture of me not wearing makeup you know what I mean so that more people realize that you know what actually it's 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 okay the way that they are Mm-hmm. I mean, just to chime in here, I really agree with what you said. Uh, you know, talking about people who own themselves, uh, no ordinary noir, I Cheng Agutu, who does this baby girl, you're slain. You know, she does these things, and I feel like it reaches out to a lot of people. But at the same time, we also have people who are more on the slender side who are also doing things. So I feel like everybody is perfect. Whatever you do, you're perfect. Just still have that self-confidence in you and also just continue to preach it to other people. I think that's very, very important. Yes. Mimi, what do you think? Um, I, com- I, I love what you said, Moe, um, about um, your body being not being the only tool that you have towards mm. achieving your goals. I think that that statement is so, so important. Um, here's how I view this. Again, no judgment. I'm I have nothing against, um, you know, you putting your best foot forward. I have nothing against um, um, people having personal physical goals or fitness goals and working towards those goals. Now, whether your 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 route is through the gym or um, a, a more surgical route, again, no judgment. Do what is best for you. However, I think that it's so, so important for people to truly and deeply examine their motivations to um, their motivations for wanting some of these changes um you also said something earlier Moe, about um body types and basically different body types being the standard per time we've literally mm-hmm. seen we've literally seen the world evolve such that mm-hmm. for different eras different body types were the standard once upon a time, if you were not model tall and stick thin, mm-hmm. you know, you were not the beauty standard. Yeah. Um, now, if you're not what um, a, a very, very tiny waist, huge hips, you are not the beauty standard. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, it's really, really like critically think about it. Are you trying to make changes to fit into what the beauty standard is now when for all you know just give it a five <laughs> seven <laughs> ten it years, and the body will. that you have right now might be the beauty standard mm-hmm. one. why then would you want to make such huge changes huge permanent changes based on such motivation you know yeah. that's how i mm. that's how i see it so again mm. i'm not absolutely not against you um seeking perfection whatever that looks like to you but i've always believed that you as you are right now is perfect 
yes, you can be. I think it's very important to be healthy, you know. Um, I think it's very important, again, to put your best foot forward, whatever that looks like to you. But what I, what I, what, where I think I stand is that you really, really examine your motivations. And sometimes you would realize that the you that you are right now is just enough. You might not need to make that change that you think you so desperately need. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I, 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 I think you both really shed some really great light and I, I hundred percent agree with what you said in the end it boils down to trends it's all trends like my sister would say it's a marketing strategy you know people are just oh this is what is it is now and then it's, it's it's pretty much just marketing strategy um for some major corporation they're just like okay maybe we should just run big groups now oh maybe we should test run such and such and such and then they push it out to the market and it's trending and everybody's hopping on it so do you really want to make long-term changes just because of a short-term trend. Um, Fife and Uyi jumped in. Uyi, do you have anything you want to add to the conversation? Uh-oh. Okay. Can, we can circle back to you. Um, all right, cool. Okay. So on to the next question, and I kind of want us to take it um, back to the career angle. I'd like to know what inspired you and what keeps you motivated in your careers. Um. Oh, this is what <laughs> this. I feel like the answer <laughs> to this one is just so big. It's so um, big. I know. <laughs> I, because inspiration and motivation comes from so many different places, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, my goals, um, my ambition inspires me, you know. My oh. goals, they inspire me. Um, I literally just have to sit down and start to think about all of the big dreams that I had, you know, and all of the big plans that I had for myself at the start of my career. And that alone is enough motivation to just get up and keep going, you know. Um, Mm. Other people inspire me so much. Mm. Again, I I just look to some of the people that I kind of look up to in the industry, both home and away, and just seeing that they've gone ahead and they've done it, you know. Because really, there's really nothing new under the sun. And yeah. there's really nothing that I'm trying to do that a bunch of incredible women before me haven't done before. Mm. Yes, I may put my own spin on it and, you know, maybe execute it a bit differently, but it's been done before. And just knowing that people have done all of these amazing things and they've done it so well and they've broken down so many barriers and broken down so many doors, it's so inspiring to me. And it's so motivating to me because it's like, why can't I be next, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, another thing. <laughs> I mean, keeping it real. <laughs> another thing. Yeah, no, is... I, I love that. I absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love it. I, I read, it really resonated with me because I also get very, very inspired by other people. I mean, it doesn't, it seems very random. But, and yeah. I, I see someone else do something. I'm like, okay, maybe I could try this. Maybe I can. So I enjoy yeah. talking with people. I enjoy hearing, oh, what did you do? How did you do? It? Oh, what did you, you know? So I really, Absolutely. it really resonated with me. I think at this point, another thing that inspires me as well is money. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 Making, yeah. <laughs> making my career make sense financially and just knowing that I will be able to build a sustainable lifestyle uh-huh. and um, future for myself from this career. That is so, it's such a big motivation for me. Um, I want to know that I was able to make big money moves just based off of what I do as an actor, as a TV presenter, as a host. That will be so, it will give me so much fulfillment. And because I know that I'm going to get so much fulfillment from it. Uh oh, I think we lost Mimi there. Hi, Mimi. Can you hear us? Oh, okay, Moet. I think you can go ahead, please. 
Yeah, so um, for me, I would say um, what really motivates me and what really inspires me is myself. Um, because mm. um, there, was this, there was a video, I can never forget this video. I think it was um, Snoop Dogg when he was um, being awarded um, mm, also yeah, in his yeah. Hollywood <laughs> um, um, star of fame. And yeah. he literally was like, yeah, I want to thank me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like most times we tend not to thank ourselves enough mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we're on this journey alone. We really mm -hmm. actually are. So if we don't seek or get motivation or inspiration from ourselves, then how can we keep on going? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm really, really, it, 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 takes, it takes conversations like this or it takes moments like this for me to actually be really motivated and inspired by myself. Because it's conversations like this that remind me that, oh, wow, you've been doing this for 10 years. Oh, wow, you've gotten this far. So obviously you are, you are doing something right. Yeah. Even if there are so many challenges, you're, you're still here, you're still going. So yeah, I, I really inspire myself. And I feel like if, if I'm not inspired by myself, then I wouldn't be able to... I wouldn't have been able to carry on, basically. So, yeah. yeah I love that. I, I really, really love that. I love that. Mimi, are you back? <laughs> Yes, I am. Okay, we lost can you. you. Hear me? <laughs> yes, yeah. Can. I realized again that I was talking to myself for like a good thirty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh my gosh! So do you want to go ahead? Um, I I don't even know where I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, well, it's okay. we're just yeah, we're just we're just on a roll talking about how you keep yourself motivated and inspire yourself. Um, oh, okay. So I think the last thing that I said on that was um, j just trying to build financial stability, um, yeah. you know, and a sustainable future for myself is such a big personal motivation for me right now. I know that um, I, when I look back, it's going to give me so much fulfillment to be able to say that I made certain big money moves just off of being a TV presenter, an actor, you know, a host. Um, because really, this is, this is what I'm very passionate about and it's what I've chosen to do with my life, yeah. career-wise. And it's, it's just going to give me so much fulfillment. So just that thought alone right now is so much motivation for me, you know, and it's, it's all the fuel I need to get up in the morning and, you know, do what I need to do, basically. Thanks so much, ladies. I think those are some really key points. Uh, Moet said, oh, she, she believes in herself. She's going to motivate herself. Mimi is talking about, you know, money uh, um, <laughs> and also other people. I, I love it. Uh, I'm going to throw a question to the audience. Um, I can see a lot of people joining in. Thank you so much for joining in. Pretty much what we've been talking about is leveraging media platforms for positive impact. And we have two amazing ladies here, Mimi Onolaja and Moet Abebe, who are killing it right now in the media space in terms of TV, film, radio. They are doing the best work. Um, so they've spoken at length. And one of the things we discussed is using their platforms to inspire confidence, especially in the younger female generation, people who look up to them, people who want to be like them, people who want to be on TV, who want to be in the movies. And I want to hear from the audience now, how do you think influencers, people who are at the top, you know, who are more front-facing, should use their platforms to impart positive impact on the younger generation so if you want to speak you can make a request and then i'll add you up onto the stage and then you can okay we have lady hopeful all right i will add you as a speaker now and then you can go on ahead but just while we take um her own point of view i'm going to be asking um yourself mimi and moet the next question that's coming up is um how can we expand women's links to each other in the media industry so if you could just think over it while we talk to lady Coco, you can go ahead please hey hi hi good evening everyone hi. so thankful for this platform i mean this um space very very insightful uh, my name is Lady Kofo. I am a media babe also. So I can relate okay. with um, 
Mimi's point of view. Like, money needs to motivate you, girl. <laughs> it needs to. Um, well, speaking about motivation, yeah, I think what really, um, me, like, what really keeps me going, because I've been doing media for, like, seven, eight years now, like, that long, yeah, uh -huh. is representation, yeah. So I was watching the Viola Davis interview, and she was speaking about how you need mental representation. Just seeing women do this thing, is enough motivation for me. So I saw, I was at King Women premiere and I was getting chills in the cinema. I was like, what is this? Like, there's just so much power, you know? Knowing that a woman can actually do this thing is inspiring to other women, yeah? So representation in whatever field it is, like the media is literally dominated by guys like you before you even think of you want to compare they just think of your oh, co-hosts like they don't literally see you as somebody that can host a show single-handedly but oh, big wow. shout out to but big shout out to women that are manning it and just like killing it in boardrooms killing it on set of sets is like really really motivating and i just want to say hi to everyone hi moe hi mimi and hi bella niger <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank Hi. you so much. You're Kofi. welcome. We really appreciate you coming on. Um, Imano, tell me, did you have something you wanted to say? Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hi, Hi Mimi. Hi, Moe. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Hello, Emmanuel. Good evening. Okay, so I just want to add something, and it's just a concern, and I do it myself as if I just woke up and I chose violence or something, but no, I think it's something that I see that's recurring with, especially creatives and influencers, when we're talking about body image and trends. I think one thing, in my own opinion, I think influencers need to do and be watch, watchful for is, for instance, I mean, I know we're all about the bag, we want to make money and all, but I feel like, for instance, let, let me go to one angle, let's say Slim T. Like, you know this thing is not what you used to achieve that body, for instance. And then you'll now go and put it on your page and be like, oh, do this thing. In the next one week, two weeks, you're going to get that body that, that everybody wants, that's trending, this is that. And you probably know you didn't get that body with that. Maybe you walked out or you did surgery. And then you now go on and put it up. I just think it's misleading. That's another thing I just feel like we need to be watchful for. Like, it's good though. We should be all about the bag and make money. But I think as people with bigger platforms to try and promote healthy images. I mean, even with Photoshopping, people will Photoshop their waist and stench it to a size zero. And then you now put it up and say they should buy Slim T. I, I'm just saying, like, that's my own in terms of watching what you put out there. to influence, especially the younger generation here. Sorry. Okay. Iman is here for fashionist. the Slim T people. Okay. <laughs> I'm <probably laughs> people to be Sorry. I'm just people are literally starving themselves. But, yes, yeah, that's okay. my own thing. I think the lady sage has something to say. Moet, I don't know if you or me have something to also add. Well, I like with what Emmanuel said, to be honest, I, I have I have similar sentiments. But at the same time, there's also this um argument of, you know, it's almost like how like maybe a certain like fizzy drink that has so much sugar in it will tell you, oh, drink you, and I'm drinking mm. it, it's for vitality. You as a consumer, you also know now. <laughs> like, that's how I feel with some yeah. of these things. You know, yeah, outrightly, yes, it's false advertising. But you also know that mm. in general, there's a lot of propaganda anyway that is on TV. You can't necessarily believe everything you see. Mm -hmm. You can't believe everything. So because somebody says, oh, yes, you should do this type of thing to your face and apply flames and then you too, you believe you should do it. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel yeah. like you, you, you need to weigh, you need to be able to weigh it. And, yeah, and you know, and outrightly as an influencer and as somebody who, yes, in all honesty, showbiz is a bit deceitful. There's a lot of deceit in it. So yes, I'm part of the people that will deceive you, especially when it now comes to collecting the bag. <laughs> yeah. So as in, I feel like you're yeah. an adult, so you should know now. You should know that drinking slim tea only and is not going to give you that waste. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's almost yeah. like what I ordered versus what I got. You know, so it's just like. Yeah. But yeah, I hear you. you as well. I hear yeah. you as well. And false advertising is a bit annoying. So I, 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 I don't know. I just feel like we just have to strike the balance when we're talking about these things. Yeah, thank thanks, Noah. Sure. Um, Lady Sage, I hope you're, you have your hand raised. Yes. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you mm-hmm. for the platform. Hi, Moe. Hi, Mimi. It's nice to be in the same um, space with you. So I was going to say something. Um, but first things first, I personally believe that I don't think it's fair to hold certain people ransom because of their way of life. I, I don't know how to properly articulate that. Because they're in the public space, because they're famous and they have a huge following, I don't think it's fair to blame them for people's decisions right okay they put their body on social media they say they they're living a certain way and then you see people blaming them or oh, um uh, for example since we're to- talking about acceptance self-love how you see yourself I'm not sure like, I'm going, to do, again. going to do surgery and then um you would see people say stuff like uh you're the reason a lot of people are going to have surgery done it's because some of you are always having surgery done. That's why young girls want to do surgery. I don't think they shoved the idea down anybody's throat. They decided oh, to get you. surgery. I That's agree. fine. They did that. They, they got surgery. And some are actually honest about it, that I get I got surgery done. But I don't think anybody ever captions their picture, go and get surgery. I don't think anybody ever does that. But some of the things they say, if you want, if you make a decision to do it, is absolutely fine. So, and that being said, um, I, I'm also in the media, I'm a radio presenter, and I've always wanted to do TV, right? But one thing that has always held me back is people's comments about how I look. I'm not an mm. ugly person, right? But I'm quite skinny. I'm really skinny. That That is actually, it was born out of a medical condition, right? So I'm, I'm quite very skinny and I find it difficult to um, gain weight. If I gain weight, I'll lose it in two days. And um, I remember going for one audition. I think that was the, that was what really broke me and just made me take five steps back, if not a hundred. I went for this audition. They were streaming live, by the way. And um, after the audition and everything, uh, the panel, the or the those on the table, um, I I think I can work with you. You sound great. I mean, we could always work with you, but you are not physically appealing. That was the first time I ever what? heard that phrase before in my life. To be honest, that's what? the first time I've ever heard the phrase before mm. in my life. And the most wow. heartbreaking part about it was the fact that they were live streaming. So people were oh watching the audition. And then it was a woman, actually, that said that. There was a man there, and he was like, oh, great. And they made a joke when I came in first because I was wearing a dress. And to be honest, I, you would barely see me wear a dress. It's been I don't remember the last time I ever wore a dress. And to be honest, everything is linked to this particular moment. And that is why... Some people are like, why are you like this? And I'm like, oh, the way I am right now is born out of a string of events. It might seem small, but it left a huge mark on me. And it was that audition. And she made a joke when I came in. You know, I gave her my number. And um, she was like, why are your legs so tiny? That was even before I said anything. Mm-hmm. She was like, why are your legs so tiny? And then I laughed it off. I was like, I'm skinny. My legs are supposed to be skinny too. And everybody laughed. And then after the audition... All the other judges, the man that was there was like, oh, you sound great. I can work with you. Um, he asked how old I was because I have a very small frame. So he probably was confused. Like, I mean, is she even an adult? And then I, so I told them how old I was at the time. I think at the time I was like, I think 21 at the time. And he was like, oh, that's cool. That's great. And then she made a comment that um, you sound great. I like the texture of your voice, but you're not very physically appealing. And then I'm like, I don't, what does that have to do with anything? It really I mean, we're women. You could, I could wear makeup. Plus, it's a, it's a TV presentation. I'm not. It's not a fashion show. I'm not here to show people. That's not what we are doing here, right? We're here to communicate. That's what the show is all about. It's not a beauty influencing show or anything like that. And then I, I left. Obviously, I didn't get called back. I already knew what was going to happen. They didn't call me back. And I think. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Lady Sage. I think I mistakenly muted you. Oh, okay, can you okay. please continue? Yes, I was trying to add someone onto the no, stage. That's fine. that's fine. I have it on now. So that single moment affected me so bad that up until now, I, I would see opportunities for TV. But I'm like, what if I get there after preparing, after, you know, building my confidence, you have this. And then I get there and somebody is telling me that I cannot occupy that position i cannot mm. be in the public space i cannot have people see me because apparently i don't fit the standard of beauty and mm. like Moe rightly um said it changes there was a time that my physique right now that was the standard me being extremely tiny with practically no waistline 
was the standard of beauty but now it's not so i, I was I, i'm like well and that's why i'm so stuck in radio i love radio very much i like being that mystery mystery voice you know i like that but it has stopped me from wanting to achieve more and the most painful part of this is there's really nothing i can do about it it's not like i don't want to look a certain kind of way you know be considered a woman and you know be considered attractive as much as public opinion shouldn't be the number one you know thing that uh, determines how you make certain decisions we cannot sit here and pretend like what the public thinks about you does not have an influence on you and your decision making process to be honest so it did hurt me and i think that that's one thing that has held me back in the media space would people find me attractive enough to give me opportunity in the media because you would line women up absolutely talented women but for some reason those who have been put in the position to select those that they want you know to be at the front would first look at you they make that they want this physical requirement you have to look like this you have to you know be big you have to be considered sexy if you're not sexy people will not listen to you and how would we promote our brand if people don't think you're attractive because it's what people see that would make them interested in what you have to say um you have to, it just it hurts and i just have to say that that is personally one of one of yeah. the things that have prevented me from wanting to explore and do more in the media space and now i'm just the girl who sits behind the microphone with nobody knowing what i look like even on my instagram page i would die first before i post the full picture what? i would die first before i post the full picture because the, mm -hmm. i attempted it one time and i was saying something i was doing like a presentation of some kind acting like i was you know at an event you know make believe scenario and all of that and you know it was a full picture i was i, I was like i was on a red carpet that's what i was trying to paint and, you know, everybody was like, oh, you sound great. And then people just went on about, don't you eat? I know smoothies you can drink that will make you, make you add weight. You look like a 12-year-old boy. One said, I miss wow. puberty. One said, you miss puberty. You know, one said, um, um, I don't know. Uh, meat is for men. The dog bones are for dogs. Oh. It was ridiculous. I took out that post and I was weak for days. I didn't post anything. And right now, like I said before, I would, I would, walk on molten magma before you see me post a full picture of myself so right now all i do is i just sell my voice that's what i do i sell my voice my ability to speak but you would never see me try to pose as somebody who is attractive and that has really hurt me and that has present prevented me from you know really reaching my full potential so i'll allow other people speak as well i'm sorry I, I I, no problem i want to say thank you so much for sharing this with us and i terribly terribly apologize for you know whatever you've been through that sounds really crazy and i, I heavily doubt that <laughs> you are you've uh, you've explained the way it is, and i'm sure you're very you're a very useful person but i'll let mimi and Moet um chime in if they have something to say on you're raising your hand, but you can go right after Mimi and what's that done? Um, I'm so sorry that you had to go through this, um, Lady Sage. Um, like it it must it I can only imagine. Sorry, Mimi. Do you wanna go? Do you wanna speak? Was Mimi trying no, to carry speak? On. No, 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 carry on, please. Uh, okay. So yeah, I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. Like I it's crazy if I tell you that I can relate. But in a in in a, in a weird way, I can really relate to, to to your story, because I've been put in positions where I feel that it's even the fact that I'm too sexy, that's why I haven't gotten a job, or or I've been and put put in a position where yes, I'm too I'm too curvy or I'm too big or I'm like it's always it's always be you're too sexy, and for me that's why I'm always really pro like. Um, female empowerment that you know own your sexy whether you're mm -hmm. slim whether you're thin whether you're curvy just own that sex appeal because it's so crazy how society has made how society has sort of made it seem as if women should be sexy but then when a woman is now sexy and mm. sort of takes over and owns her sexy it's now again a problem so it's almost like what do I do so that's why I, I was saying that I can really relate to your story like I've been in positions where I feel like, oh, I didn't get this gig because I know that, oh, yes, I'm too sexy. And, you know, um, apart from that also, the industry as a whole is very clicky. And it's mm. also really based on who you know. And I also know that 
there have been some opportunities based on the fact that I don't necessarily want to make that extra effort where it feels like I sort of have to, sorry to say this, but kiss someone's ass, you know? And there's a, there, 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 there's a whole lot of that that even as a person who you may think fits in with the beauty standard now also equally has to deal with. So it's so sad that you have to go through that. And it's so sad that, you know, you're in a position where you feel that you, you know, you, you, you can't take pictures and you're not confident with yourself. But all I can say is you have to, you, you're, you're the only one that can own your sexy. You're the only one that can own that confidence. And when I keep on saying, or when I keep on saying the sexy, I mean that confidence that is in a way sexual. Because we, I feel like as women, we should not be ashamed of our sexiness. We should not be ashamed of what makes us feminine. You know what I'm trying to say? So, if, so even if you're a skinny girl, or even if you feel like you don't necessarily fit to certain standards, on social media alone, like Mimi said, there are so many girls that are absolutely killing it that are skinny. And... They're, and they have a huge following and they have people like I just feel like it's it's so crazy how people keep on talking about beauty standards but everyone individually has beauty standards I have male mm -hmm. friends that are obsessed with huge women women that mm -hmm. quote unquote a lot of us will say are out of shape or, or, or obese that's what a man wants like that's what this particular man wants or that's what this particular um fashion house wants or you know what i mean and then there's some people who really like skinny people or really skinny girls so i just feel like as long as we're not unhealthy and as long as we're able to just make the balance and also just accept that all we've got is ourselves even though it may be such a hard thing to do just close your eye like it's hard but just close your eye don't delete that picture post it because eventually yeah. one thing i've noticed about the world is once you keep on giving them a certain image of yourself and you keep on letting them know that you are accepting of yourself then the world will adjust the world will start to accept you but the world will not accept you until you take that step until you take that leap so that's just the advice that i would i would give you just take that leap thank you so much Moet. thank you so much mimi yes can you hear me yes okay <laughs> it's been such a struggle um i i absolutely 100 percent co-sign everything um Mo moe just said um again i'm really really sorry you had to go through that that is so unfortunate nobody should have to go through that but i think the first thing i would say is i promise you you are not alone you are you are you are not alone in any way um, and sometimes, even the, some of the people that you view from afar and you probably think have it 100% good, in weird ways are going through the exact same thing that you you just described. Um, I ha I, I'm, this is just an example. So I'm trying to do a lot more acting right now. It's where I'm trying to take my character to these days. And I have this crippling, almost, almost crippling fear that I'm not, I'm not, I'm never going to make it as a leading lady because mm -hmm. I'm not a certain size. Um, now this is, this is a personal fear, fear, you know, and it's something that I, I'm very happy, first of all, that I was even able to identify it because now I can start to tackle it head on. I say this to myself a lot because it, it, it answers a lot of my questions. It, it, it addresses a lot of my concerns over a wide variety of topics and issues. There are, I mean, debatable over 7 billion people in the world, which means that there's always an audience for you. There's always mm -hmm. a market for you. There's always a space for you. Um, and it's, I, I, I say that to myself a lot to just remind myself that there's, there's more than enough room for each and every one of us to shine. There's more than, more than enough room for us to spread our wings. <laughs> Opportunities right in front of you just seem to be evading you all the time. I absolutely know I can relate, but I think we owe it to ourselves to, like Mo, uh, Moe said, just keep on going. Put that picture up. Put yourself out there. It might seem really daunting, but you always have to just keep going. 
Because if you don't, when that space that belongs to you finally opens up, you're not going to be there, you know, to occupy it. So mm. it's, I, I always mm. remind myself that yeah. there is room, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that the people that want mm-hmm. to see me as a leading lady, they are there, you know. The people that will relate to a person like me taking a lead role or taking center stage, they are there. And they are there in the millions, you know. So Very why should true. I shrink myself course, because I course. think that I'm not enough, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, 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 I absolutely agree with you, Moe. And I would say that, and I say this to myself all the time, just keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm a star in my own right. And, you know, there's room for me. And that's that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mimi and Moet. Um, I hope, Lady Sage, you've been able to get something inspiring and encouraging from their words. I, I really, really, I'm very grateful that you shared this with us. And I hope that, you know, in your future endeavors, whatever, just go out there, do you, be confident in who you are. There's nothing wrong with you at all. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, Onye Ubalatu, you can go ahead, please, but what, press for time, so let's, let's keep it two minutes max. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, Lady Sage, uh, this is about you now, so please just bear with us. Listen, see, uh, Lady Sage, I'm not a violent person, but I beg, if you get the number of these people, you get the address, eh? <laughs> I hope I hope them on your behalf, uh-huh. you know. But you see, there's a lot that we can learn from this. And I like the, the previous speakers actually spoke um, well on the topic. And like I said, there's a lot that we all can apply. We all can learn and apply even to our personal lives and business. Okay, so you see... Um, the thing about being skinny, I'll, I'll touch on that and then move real quick. There's this um, MTV Bay's presenter, the light skinned one. She's skinny as well, and she's doing fantastic. We love her. She's the delight and crush of a lot of people. I don't know if she still works there. Uh, so skinny is not a problem. Now, another thing with, you see, there are some people that don't know how to um, give what is called um, not constructive criticism is not the word, the sentence I want to use, but basically people do not know how to give um, constructive remarks as oh. to how it fits into their own purpose, right? So those guys, Lady Sage, they literally, I am sure they set out to create a magazine or a TV show or they're looking for a presenter that can sell the whole sex appeal, right? And that was modeled after what a larger spectrum of either the male or uh, the society perceives as being sexy. And like we all know, trends change every now and then. That's to tell you that now people could just sit down and say, you know what, mm-hmm. let's throw this out, throw marketing behind it. And then before you know, it's just like now a lot of the Gen Z's were consuming contents. They aren't consuming it because it's good for them. They're just consuming it because it's lifestyle, because it's been shoved, you know, down their throats over and over again. So it is a clear fact that waiting we call our calabash. Now our neighbors go say, I will mean, give me, I want to take a tea through with the tea, or I want to take pack water. And um, I think it was Moet that said something really, really great. <laughs> and, yeah, so funny. Uh, you know, the world will follow what you what you give to mm-hmm. them with yeah. high level of consistency, mm-hmm. right? So if you if you latch on to that one situation in life to then become your narrative, trust me, for every time, even when someone pays you a compliment that says, oh my God, I like your stature, you would think that they're just being sarcastic, right? So... I, it's important, even in our own business, take a cue from Portable. When Portable came out, me, I joined people, we say, what kind of rubbish nonsense? But I can count how many times I did bathroom the bath. Now, only me will call sing the guy's song, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's own this narrative. So it's important that each and every yeah. one of us here, yeah, God made a make mistake. That's God true. know why make you like that, make me like this, make my way like that, make the other speakers, every human that you come across. There's a reason, and that market is waiting for you. So if we sit down and say, because of all this, or the, the oh, I, I think I did it again. 
me, I think I muted you again. You could go ahead if you're not done. But yeah, just a few more seconds till I have to yank the the speaking, the talking to them from you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, sorry, what, what was the last thing you heard? Is that... I had I oh I had muted you by mistake, and you were talking about you were pretty much just inspiring the lady sage, and you were saying no one is you, and that's your power. Pretty much it. Whatever you put out is what people will take. There's a yeah, different exactly. version of everybody. Yeah. And closing, in closing with this, yeah. God need to make mistake, and mm. God know I make you like that, and he make me and every other person. So please. If you allow that one situation, or anybody listening, including myself, if we allow that one terrible situation hold us down, what you will do is, the reason why God made us the way we are, right? There is a market waiting for that. Mm. So if we allow that one thing hold us down, we will never get off our chairs so that these people can spot us so we can become useful to them. Yeah. And that's that's just my submission. Thank you. Thank you so much. You were you really articulated that very very well. Um, so we're, we're rounding up, and thank you so much to everybody who's been requesting to join. Unfortunately, we're pressed for time. Just in conclusion, I would want Mimi, um, to tell us what is one advice you give your younger self, the younger female Mimi who was in secondary school, and then they gave her that really terrible position in that contest, that fake made up contest. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to her? Um, I think, I mean, there's so much advice to give the younger me, you know, but right now I think the one thing I would say to her is to be unapologetic. Um, I, I definitely mm. needed to be a lot bolder um, in going after the things that I wanted and a lot more confident and just a lot more unapologetic in being me, you know. And if I could turn back the hands of time, it's the one thing that I would definitely, definitely try to do better for sure, you know. So, I mean, it's, yeah, to everyone that is listening or to everyone that is a bit young or just everyone in general, honestly, I think just be unapologetic in going after the things mm. that you want. And I think I would also really tell her to not be afraid to look a little stupid because sometimes oh. that is the risk that you take in just boldly going after your goals. Yeah. But don't be afraid. What's the worst that can happen? What is the worst that can happen, literally? So, yeah, I would say be unapologetic, that. be bold, don't be afraid to look stupid, and don't be afraid to try again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Mimi. I really like that. Moet, I, I don't want to give you the same question, just to add a bit of spice. Um, the final question, which I was going to ask for both, but just because we're pressed for time, is how can we expand women's links to each other in the media industry? And I know at some point wh- while you were talking, you spoke about how sometimes the industry can be a bit clicky. So how can we kind of go past that and then work together for collective growth, for collaboration, for support, you know, mentorship for younger people who are trying to enter the industry. What are some things, some ways that you feel like we can sort of bridge that gap? Um, I just feel um, for starters, things like this, this is Mm. one of the ways to, um, you know, sort of create that link. Um, there's always this statement that we hear, women supporting women. Mm. And it seems to me, most times, it's just a statement. I don't really see a lot of women actually really living up to that statement. Um, But the way I feel is, obviously, with ways like this, you know, um, and also, if women are in positions of power, that they should try their best not to necessarily do the same things that men are doing to us, quote unquote, you Mm. know, maybe putting people in positions that they don't deserve to be there. You know what I mean? We're already getting it from men because, um, you know, um, based on, I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean to say sex for grace, but you know what I mean? Or sex for work or whatever, you know, like we're already getting that sort of, um, energy from men and then you then have women in positions of power who are more keen on putting their family members or their best friends mm. as opposed to the women who actually do need and who actually are 
um, 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 worthy to be in these positions. So I just feel like, yeah, by like by by mentorship things like this, um, and also um, you know trying to break the what's the word is it break the curse or break the <laughs> break break the norm basically yeah. you know and um try to actually uphold that statement women supporting women that's how i feel like we can do it thank you so so much moet thanks to you moet and to mimi i have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation i actually didn't want it to end but i have to be careful for your time also because we're promised i promised you 40 minutes so i wanted to stick to that <laughs> i really really appreciate you both sharing these words of wisdom with us this nugget and to everybody who tuned in thank you so so much if you requested to join and you were unable to don't worry next week we're back again with another conversation tag conversation with another set of amazing women who are doing great in their respective field so stay tuned to the bella bella ninja twitter page and bella ninja style on instagram to hear about all the updates and then to also re-watch and listen to this recording thank you all so so much and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day thanks mimi thanks moe thank, thank you, you so, so much Bye. thank Mary. you moe thanks everyone thanks everyone take care love bye, bye mimi